Well, 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 that was, uh, who was that? That is Quitter, our very own Bukaki Drive-By's band. He plays the triangle in that band, and uh, that's a song called Bad Decisions uh, from an album called Seven Eyes on the Prize. You can find them, I believe, on our LinkedIn. They got a pretty good album there. Uh, I actually quite like it as much as I don't want you to tell Bukaki that. Rob the Mod, hello. We got one of our mods in the house tonight. Welcome to Gavin and Games for Monday April, whatever the fuck it is. I don't know. I don't know. Six, four to 25. Four goddamn cock duty 25. How's everybody doing? Good to see everybody. I'm going to tell you something right now. Today is a packed show. There is no way on God's green earth that we are going to get through all of it. But I'm going to get to the stuff that's most important that you care about. As a reminder, actually, two things. The first thing, uh, three things, actually. The first thing is uh, today is a Discord show in the sense that you can call in for free. It won't cost you a penny. If you're like Jeffy, that's great, but I don't know how to get on your Discord. That's not a problem, pal. All you have to do is go down to the bottom there, the link tree, and you can sign up for free. Put yourself in the call-in waiting room, hook up your microphone, and we'll be talking like old pals. Now, the other way is with Super Chats, okay? I might look at the chat from time to time, but in order to make this a very good listening experience, this is not a heavy chat day, but if you Super Chat me, you goddamn right, I'll get to it and we'll talk about it. Um, and I'll, I'll go to the chat from time to time, but it's not it's not front of mind because I want to stay focused on what we're talking about. That's today's show. Number two. Number three. Was that number one? That was number two. Doesn't matter. Number one. God damn it. Fuck you, Jeffy. Number two. Uh, tonight or tomorrow, we will be live streaming uh, for everyone, but members only chat. Uh, we will be live streaming um, IGNs. We did this last week. Uh, this is called uh, Rogue Jam. It's the second episode, and it's kind of like Shark Tank for video games. It's really It was surprisingly engaging. Uh, me and the chat watched it last Monday. I will either stream it tonight or tomorrow. I'm not entirely sure when yet. Uh, but just so you know, if you want to watch it with us, this week's subject is they're picking best graphics. Last week, they picked the game that had the most potential the highest potential to become something big. Uh, that was last week. You can watch it now on our channel. Obviously, you can watch it without the commentary and the chat over on IGN. And then this week, it's all about how sexy it looks. The last thing this weekend, not sure on the time yet. I want to say it's about 3, 4 o'clock California Pacific time. We will be doing members only pot and popcorn, and we will be doing some bangers. We got Batman, the Batman we're showing and we're also showing the new motion picture Uncharted based on the hit video game starring Spider-Man himself. Come on now. So if you're interested in any of that, all that's over on the Discord and my Twitter and here and whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's all the news. That's all the, that's all the setting it up. That's all the setting it up. But uh, there you go. Let's get right into, uh, let me get a little bit of the bubbly. Hang on. Let's get right into the news. The news. Hang on. Uh, we should we should connect first for a moment, shouldn't we? Do we want to get right into the news? I look. There are podcasts where I listen to them and I just say, you know, it's like it's immediate. There's no foreplay. There's there's nothing. You get right to the news, and I want to do that because sometimes I'm like, oh, dude, shut up. I don't care. I don't care about this, that, and the other, but sometimes I do. I don't know. Maybe I'll put a poll up and see what you guys think, but wait, wait, let me just think. How was your weekend? How was my weekend? What did I do? I worked on ads for members. They're still not done. Oh, oh, if there's time, I, I spent a lot of time looking for artists this weekend because I want to rebrand the whole website, and I want to show you guys some of the ones I'm thinking about to get your feedback. So I did that this weekend. Uh... You know, we just not not a lot. Just you know, worked. We the family hung out. We watched some movies and ordered some food and uh, found a great uh, Chinese restaurant that delivers. That's really fucking good. Um, but this weekend was kind of chill. Kind of chill. I, I oh I played Turbo Overdrive, which is a super cool cyberpunk uh, boomer shooter. Uh, I didn't like it at first, but. I'm starting to warm up to it now that I understand more how you're supposed to play it. At first, it just looked like it was a Doom clone, but it requires a little bit more finesse than that. Um, so, yeah, it was good. It was good. Thanks for asking. I appreciate that. Thanks for asking, man. You're, you're, you're salt of the earth. Okay. 
let's talk about the Elon in the room. Of course, of course, of course, Elon Musk has had his offer of $44 billion, uh, and this relates to games in, in, in sort of. It's more of geek news, but it's such big geek news, and it also relates to me and the show because I have a, a, a relatively decent following over on Twitter, and that's how I communicate about the show. And, and people have asked me, it's like, Jeff, are you going to talk about Elon's thing? Um, sure. I mean, I, you know, I don't have a lot to say on it. You know the story. He... Uh, what started out as like a, a 10%, almost 10% ownership of the company uh, where he was going to be on the board and he rejected the offer to be on the board has become an actual $44 billion. Fuck it, I'm taking over the whole thing and I'm going to take it private. Uh, we don't know if the current leadership is going to stay or not, given that he has tweeted, although who the fuck knows with him and his tweets, but he has tweeted... Um, that he doesn't have a lot of faith in current management, so they all may be out the door, but who cares in their minds? They're super fucking rich. They're already super fucking rich. So, but this looks like it's a done deal, barring anything that a lay person like myself isn't aware. It's not like the Activision Microsoft deal where I don't think it's got to get checks and balances and all this shit. I, I don't, I haven't heard anything about that. It sounds like people are talking about this like it's a done deal. Um, this is what he said. It was interesting. Uh, so he tweets out a couple of things. The main thing he says, look, free speech is the bedrock of a functioning democracy. And Twitter is the digital town square where, it, where matters vital to the future of humanity are debated, said Mr. Musk. That's, he's quoting himself. I also want to make Twitter better than ever by enhancing the product with new features, making the algorithms open source to increase trust, defeating the spam bots and authenticating all humans. Twitter has tremendous potential. I look forward to working with the company and the community of users to unlock it. Um, and then he said something else. He also, uh, well, I'll get to that in a second. He, he had a couple of, uh, he said, I hope that my, even my worst critics remain on Twitter because that is what free speech means. So um, just a few thoughts on this. Um, first off, as a, as an avid Twitter user, I look forward to, any new ideas that will enhance the product. I'm not one of these people. I don't hate Netflix. A lot of people hate Netflix. Love Netflix. I don't hate Twitter. Twitter's terrible. Elon, come save us on Twitter. Save you from what? It's awesome. I love Twitter, right? And they just introduced Twitter Blue, which is great. It let you edit your tweets. Um, I have super follows up, which by the way, this is not going to be an ad. I just want to show you. I want to show you kids what you're missing out on. If you go to my super follows, um, it's all kinds of cool shit. Behind, look at this. This is, what we, this is what we talked about yesterday. We literally got items from Twisted Metal that were never released. Never released. Never seen them. Uh, we got concept art you've never seen before. We've got just fun conversations going on over there. We got uh, uh, game designs you haven't seen before. We got videos you haven't seen before. Some God of War 3 behind the scenes when I was directing it. On and on and on. There's a there's a little correspondence there between me and Corey about the first boss of God of War 2. And on and on and on it goes. Point is, though, I don't got a problem with the Twitter. I'm enjoying the Twitter a great deal. But if Elon's coming in and saying, hey, uh, I want to do more. I want to add more. I want to create. That's awesome. And getting rid of spam. That's awesome. There's nothing he's saying here that I think is bad. Um, if he does what he says. What I'm more fascinated by is... The so it's easy to look at it and say, Oh, I don't like that the world's richest man controls this. And then you start to think, It's like, okay, do you know who you know who the CEO of Twitter was before Elon Musk bought it today? Is is and he's still the CEO? That guy's worth 12 billion dollars. It's not like you've got a bunch of ragtag college kids working for the Harvard Lampoon and suddenly big money comes in and takes away something we all love and cherish. It's always been run by business in order to, to, to progress their agenda. So people who are like, I'm gonna leave Twitter. Leave. I'll leave too if it gets bad, but right now it's the same as it ever was, and maybe it'll get even better. And if it doesn't, then I'll leave. Um I was getting into an argument with one person, though. It's just I, I, the, the state of education is astounding to me in America, at least. I can only speak to America. I literally was arguing with one person on Twitter about they're like going, uh, oh, fuck it. I'll just read you what he said. I mean, I, I hope the person doesn't mind, but I'll read you what they fucking said. Um, so I'm talking to this person. You know, we, you can agree to disagree. Doesn't mean somebody's an idiot just because they disagree with you. Uh, this person's basically saying, um, 
I told he he literally says uh, he's letting Elon Musk know this. He's responding to Elon Musk. I told David Jaffe back in 2018 that Twitter is the town square of today, and he dismissed my concerns because it's a private company. Quote a private company, and they can do whatever they want against constitution which was written centuries ago. I'm glad you're going to fix this mess. And then I spent about seven or eight tweets trying to explain to this fella or Folletti, I don't know who they are. It's, it, it, it's, it's a private company, right? I'm not saying your heart is in the wrong place. Yes, it would be wonderful if there was government run social media. So there would always be a place to go. It wouldn't negate private social media like Twitter and Facebook, but there would always be a place to go that you know you are going to get your First Amendment rights protected. But this guy just seems to think because, I'm going to, say, I'm going to assume it's a dude, um, because he wants Twitter to have First Amendment protections, or he thinks he does, then just because he wants it, it should occur. And I'm like, I get that you want that. A lot of people say they want that. But that's, Elon Musk is not beholden to the Constitution in regards to what he does with speech in his private business any more than Disneyland is. And it's just like people seem really confused by this. Um, this is not, if Elon says, look, I want to run my private company and he's pulling it, it's not going to be stock market anymore. It's going to become an actual private company, not a privately, publicly traded company. Um you know, if he wants to say no, one of our mandates is we're going to run the company with First Amendment protections based on the Constitution. Great. I won't complain. Um, but to act like he's, you know, like, oh, Twitter's finally going to follow the Constitution. That's not their job. It's never been their job. It's never been any private company's job to do that. It's ridiculous. People don't understand anything. They don't, and then this person says, um, uh, Twitter does not have to be a government entity. We don't live in 1970 anymore. What? Multinationals are greater than governments. It's sad, I know, but it has replaced physical town squares. That's a reality. So free speech is needed more than ever. And I said, again, you are arguing for what you want. And I think you'd find many people who agree. I am simply saying it is not what Twitter is. So you can wish all you like, but Twitter doesn't have to provide its customers First Amendment protection. I'm giving this guy the final word. He says, and what if Elon provides First Amendment protection? Are you going to admit you were wrong? About what? About what, you moron? I'm tired of arguing with morons. Why are people so fucking stupid? Why? Well, it makes sense. Now this guy's into Bitcoin. Why, why are people so fucking stupid is what I would like to know. Admit I was wrong about what? I never said I, I, I don't. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a fierce First Amendment protected, protector. But... I'm not going to force a company to, to, to behave in a way that's illegal, which would be saying I'm the government and I'm forcing you to ban these 20 words. I mean, what, what do you, you can't do that. You can't do it. I don't understand some people they are just dumb. And I don't mean that like they're not capable of being smart. I just mean they're dumb, meaning they don't have the education or they don't bother. I don't care anymore. I don't care anymore. I'm tired of bending over backwards trying to act like I'm a nice guy because you, not you, but this, the royal you in this case, you didn't bother to study. You didn't bother to pay attention in eighth grade civics. That's your problem at this point. Don't ask me to fucking coddle you like a fucking baby. Figure it out. Let's move on, shall we? Um, I got this voice call on the red phone the other day. Um, it was about Sony and their video games coming in 2022. Uh, let me play this for you. And then I want to kind of give you some news that is directly related to what this fine fella, his name is Joseph, is saying. Hey, David, this is Joseph Yeshik. I'm on a lot of your streams, loving the show, man. Just want to kind of talk about, you know, there's a lot of rumors going on about Naughty Dog's um, next multiplayer game and, you know, possibly Guerrilla Games' other multiplayer game. And I also want to just talk about not only those studios, but what other games are coming out possibly in 2022 besides God of War? Because we really don't know for sure other than God of War and Forspoken. There's got to be something else, one or two more big games maybe. I just want to have a chat about it and, and see your thoughts and, and if you think that there is going to be another game outside of those two that we know are confirmed. All right, thanks a lot, David. 
Because Joseph's going, hey, what's happening with the 2022 releases? All we know right now is for Spoken and God of War. We don't really even know God of War. I'm of the mind, even though one of the God of War team members went out and tweeted to the contrary, I'm of the mind that thing's slipping. That message from Corey, I don't know, man. We talked about this in the last show. That message from Corey, if Corey was serious, if, if, if they were serious, Corey, would, here's what I'll tell you. It would stun me to learn that Santa Monica knows it's going to ship in 2022 because if they knew like they knew like they knew Corey would have looked at the camera and said fellas we know you're impatient we're impatient too we can't wait to share it we are still on target for 2022 we're only months away we cannot wait to share that you know no date not even the date they had already committed to was said so I think this thing's going to slip but regardless of that right now all we know is for spoken and God of War This guy is a QA tester coming in hot from uh, uh, Naughty Dog on his LinkedIn profile. Today, it makes the news that he has been working on an unannounced remake project. When I was working or when I was uh, interviewing Mike Mumbauer, if you remember that, who headed up the VASG department in Sony San Diego, his group was the ones making this remake. And then something happened and Neil Druckmann and, and boys come in and say, we would like that back, please. And they're now making it and finishing it at Naughty Dog. All the rumors point to the fact that this is going to be a 2022 fall or holiday game. I'll give it a play, um, mostly because I love The Last of Us Part Two and I love the improvements. And to see those improvements kind of, you know, put back onto the original, I think could be really, really cool. I think if 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 uh, Druckmann has any ideas or scenes he had to cut or whatever, that would be cool to get those in there. Um, I love the fact you can get your actors and actresses back uh, and not worry about them having aged like in a, in a movie, but you can just kind of go, it's digital, it's performance capture, so Ellie won't have aged, aged a day. Stuff like that is, I, I think that's really, really cool. But to be honest, how many fucking more times do we have to play this game? I mean, this is more of what's happening in the industry. Everybody's taking not only safe bets, but they're looking for bets that don't take as long to complete. And and look, the audience shows up in droves, so what are you going to do? I mean, that's the audience says we're okay with this. But I'm kind of like, my understanding is right now what Naughty Dog is working on is uh, a multiplayer game and this. And I'm like, really? Can we Can we go back to the days where Naughty Dog made you know, new single player IPs. I know you've got 10 studios already working on service games. Do they have to be one of them? Just like, just remember when the Square Enix president comes out and says, hey, um, we gave the wrong team the Avengers. That's not what they do. I'm not saying Naughty Dog can't do multiplayer. I, I've played some of their multiplayer games. They're really good. But that's not what we love about Naughty Dog. Don't make them fucking do the service bullshit, even if they want to. Tell them to go make another story fucking game. Brand new IP. Anyway, so this may be coming along with God of War if it ships, as well as Forspoken. Also, um, this is a totally different developer. A PlayStation dev claims he's working on something equally as cool as God of War, Ragnarok, but isn't allowed to talk about it. This guy's been working on his game three to five years. I think he's like a... uh, uh, it says his name is Robert Morrison. He says it was a nice surprise to receive this rad gift today from PlayStation Creative Arts. PlayStation has some bangers coming out this year, um, and I'm trying to think what what does he do? Uh, Robert Morrison. Uh, I don't. He's an. It looks like he's an animator. I don't know if he totally works for Sony or he is a contract worker, but he says I'm not working on Ragnarok, but something equally cool. That feeling when you have three to five years of work, you can't show, he says. So it's possible he's working on The Last of Us remake, but I hope not. I hope Sony does have something else. The other thing, and this only dropped um, a couple of, like, last month. I missed this one. This is uh, Fire Sprite I knew was doing a horror game. I didn't know they were doing it with Unreal Engine 5, and I didn't know that it was going to be so big they're saying it's a triple a narrative driven horror adventure game as far as i know they're still looking for a narrative game director so if you're into those things maybe you can give them a call uh but so so i mean they're definitely working on shit they're definitely working on shit but i will say it is weird to be heading into the summer and really not know much of what sony first party is putting out but xbox has the same problem we don't know what the fuck xbox is putting out we wanted bi- ah, look i was there we wanted mainstream. We want I mean, God, you know, I, I don't pine for the good old days. I don't because I get indie games out my butthole and I'm fine with it. 
But I was there, man. We wanted to be mainstream. We wanted, I remember when, if you sold 100,000 copies of a piece of software, you were like, oh my fucking God. Right now, that's like less, if you don't do, if it's a big release and you don't do that in the first half of a day, you're probably fucked, right? That, that's, we got exactly what we wanted. But with it comes this, the, the fact that, that, that it, it's taking forever for these games to come out, uh, it's just, it's a shame. It was so nice to be able to get big games faster, but that's what we got. Take the good and the bad. Um, I want to let you know, Overwatch. Overwatch 2 beta starts tomorrow. Uh, it's closed beta. You can opt in now. You have to own a copy of the original Overwatch, along with some other hidden reasons uh, to, to be accepted. Uh, location and type of computer, you know, whatever they're looking for at any given moment, they'll let you in. I've signed up. I hope I get in. I, I'm, I was never a massive Overwatch 1 fan, but... I know a lot of people were. It was a huge, massive success. So just as a hint or as a reminder, if you love that series and love that franchise, get on over there. Uh, just go to the blizzard.net, whatever it's called, Battle.net or wherever you, you know, you go to their, their portal, sign up for your uh, your beta, you may make it. There's also, they're also letting you sign up for Diablo uh, beta uh, on the PC for cell phone, which we'll talk about in a second. But this is happening. The other thing is, I don't know if you saw this, uh, some news dropping about Call of Duty. Today, we got the NPDs. We'll be talking a little bit about that. But we're also talking about the uh, investor call that, war, uh, call, uh, what are they called? Activision Blizzard did. It wasn't good. They've lost a lot of money. They've lost a lot of users. We'll talk about that. But in that call, in that very call, uh, they also... Uh, that's pretty interesting. Talking about uh, the new war zone. So they're, they, they basically are saying that um, there is going to be a brand new war zone, uh, which is their Battle Royale free-to-play Call of Duty, if you're not familiar. Um, they're saying that... Um, I don't know, and they haven't announced if it's a sequel or if it's just bolted on to the current, but they're saying it's a new experience. And they're also saying that... Um, it really is um, awesome. <sighs> okay, of course it is. Uh, but 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 th what did they say? One of the one of the one of the people on the team said that. Uh, where I gotta find it. I I. Uh, da, 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 da. The exact quote was interesting because it it was like wow they're really talking this up. I forget where it is, but the gist of it was. Warzone 2, let's call it Warzone 2, is going to be, I think they said like groundbreaking or revolutionary or mind-blowing. I don't know what that means. It's probably just hyperbole, but that's good. But the other news that's really exciting to me is the single-player stuff. I, I like uh, Modern Warfare. Modern Warfare 2019 uh, is the best-selling Call of Duty ever. Um, the sequel will be out, I believe, yes, this year. They say um, it's a grittier take on modern warfare with more close quarter combat, tricky decision making, classic Call of Duty set piece moments. Um, they also say that it will be centered around the drug war against Colombian cartels, which I think is a really cool angle. I'm excited to play that. Um, so, you know, if you're into Call of Duty, I don't really give a fuck about Warzone. Um, I don't think I've ever even played Warzone. I've played Call of Duty multiplayer, of course. Don't think I've ever played Warzone. I'm kind of battle royaled out, but I am excited for the single player uh, Call of Duty. So that will be coming. Hopefully uh, they never miss their schedule. That'll be coming this Christmas, I assume. Speaking of battle royale, uh, Ubisoft has announced Project Q. This was leaked two days ago and there's video. In fact, I'll show you the video while we're talking about Don't it. Don't touch me there. Oh, tee hee 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 hee. I'll read that in just a second. Um, uh, this is the video of the game. Uh, it's called, uh, it is called, here we go, uh, Project Q. And I'll play this while we're talking a little bit about it. You see it over there in the, in the box. Um, Project Q, it's a multiplayer arena battler that leaked last year. But this was on uh, a couple of days ago. They actually released, there was footage and some more information. So I guess Ubisoft decided to just say, fuck it, let's put it out there. Here's what they say. 
Uh, so we heard you heard, says Ubisoft, introducing Codename Project Q, a team battle arena letting players truly own the experience. The game is in early development and we will keep testing. So for now, all you can do is register for upcoming tests. So it's obviously, if you look at the footage on your screen, it's clearly inspired visually by Fortnite, Knockout City, things like that. But um, it is early, things could change. But what's interesting is when I first read this, where they say, we want to let players truly own the experience. I was like, oh shit, this is fucking their NFT bullshit. Uh, but they've come out and said, no, 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 we're not doing NFTs. Here's what they mean when they basically say own the experience. It's actually pretty interesting. I don't know if it'll be good or not, but it's kind of cool. Here, here's what it is. Um, you pick your own character, um, and then from there, it's it's almost like going to a, 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 a an, an arena combat shooter buffet, where you can pick your character, and then you pick your own weapons, your own abilities, and skills, with the player being able to pick three individual, these are called wonders, that can be mixed and matched. Weapons are not your typical assault rifles and submachine guns. This is from uh, exputer.com, by the way. Uh, weapons include decks of cards, fireworks, hammers, sticks, and paint guns that will deal damage to enemies. You also get to pick other unique abilities and skills as well, such as Icarus wings that allow you to jump and fly. Um, so it, you know, the twist is, I guess, that you are mixing your own hero. Uh, you know, that's kind of cool. It depends how deep it is. And it's also a little weird because, one of the things that make these things successful is they're deep and being able to look at a character like an overwatch and go, Oh, you know, that's Winston. I know he does this and I know he's got this weapon. And you know, there's an understanding of who you're playing against that a good player takes into account. When I look at somebody and go, I don't know what the fuck they are because they could mix and match all this shit. I'm curious how that's going to actually, uh, how that's going to end up working. But you know, there you go. Uh, there you go. Uh, that's uh, Project Q. And, 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 and it is good. I am glad to hear uh, that they are not talking about doing um, NFTs. Although we will talk, there is a little bit of news still today about NFTs and Ubisoft that's really weird. But we'll talk about that in just a second. Let me get uh, these two super chats real quick. Darth Nugget says, you're muted, you old so-and-so. I appreciate that, buddy. We got it worked out, but thank you, sir. Seven of the nine is super chatted. Thank you, sir. He says, if God of War Ragnarok gets delayed, I'll be okay with it. As long as Starfield releases this year, then I'll be good. Also, who do you think could buy Ubisoft? Ah, oh, fuck it. We'll talk about that now. Um, so, well, I mean, yeah, Rag Ragnarok... The only problem with Rag Ragnarok getting delayed... The, the delays used to suck but they were for the best that's still the case if you're a third party but these days if you're first party because there's so little coming down the line and you delay that's a massive fucking hole it it it, it, it seems to me that it's even more pressing to make your dates now so uh yeah if that gets delayed what are you going to put out for christmas i mean sony look if sony misses that with christmas but Xbox does hit with Starfield. And again, no one's seen anything from Starfield yet. But my understanding is that's how Bethesda does it. Let's assume that is going to make it. They consistently seem confident about it. And apparently they're showing stuff in June about it. But who knows? But assuming that they do make it and Sony misses, um, I mean, it's not like curtains or anything. But, it, you know, Sony's had terrible nothings out for Christmas before. But it's just like, man, to hit Christmas and all you've got is the, the, the remake uh, of Last of Us, I guess you better fucking hope for Spoken is really fucking good. Um, who do you think could buy Ubisoft? So what I'll say about that 7 of 9 is just in a little bit we're going to talk about that. And as it relates to a weird kind of thing, which I just think is so fucking stupid. So save that thought. I will get to it. I, I, I very much appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Um, but right now, I want to tell you uh, about a couple of things. Uh, the first thing I want to tell you about... Uh, before, because in a second, we're going to talk about Diablo and some really cool Diablo news uh, dropped today. But first, I do want to tell you about Dog. Dog is a motion picture show about a kinky BDSM love. I make it sound like a, 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 
I make it sound like a rom-com. She's a kinky BDSM loving vampire. She is though. She's into the BDSM and she's into the vampire. She is a vampire. You understand? She goes to this club one night. She finds two folks. She says, I'm going to fuck them. I, I, this is, it's not a comedy. That's just how I pitch it. Um, she takes them home and they realize, holy shit, we are in the clutches of a vampirus and we got to fucking save our fucking lives. Uh, it's not a comedy. It is a horror movie through and through. You can see the trailer on the screen right now. It looks really fucking good. Uh, if you go to the link tree, if you're somebody who actually wants to invest in movies, uh, they were thinking for a while about let's go the Kickstarter route. Let's go the Indiegogo route. Now they're saying, fuck it. We're just looking for some investors. We're looking to actually invest, find investors that want to make back end money. So you put some money up, you actually get some money if the movie does well. These days, everything gets sold to Amazon, even if it's terrible. And if you look at it, I don't think it's going to be terrible. I think it clearly looks like a professionally shot motion picture. Uh, so if you're into investing and you think you want to put some of your ducats in the movie biz, check out dog, uh, go to the link on the link tree and that will let you send an email directly to the director and the writer and the producer who will let you know what you got to do to get some more information about his movie. Uh, one more thing before we get to, uh, blizzard and Diablo, it's important. It's important. Uh, day one patch kids, come on now. Our very own Ron Tanuki has shown up on the scene. He says, fellas, I'm not wearing a stitch of clothes, but I want to tell you something. I created the day one patch kids for all the children in America who don't have enough to eat. None of that's true, but what is true? Rotten Tanuki did make the day one patch kids. They are a mix of the pack cabbage patch kids, the garbage pail kids, and your favorite video game characters. You can go over to the website, which is in the link tree below. You're going to be able to find yourself t-shirts, clocks, towels, uh, phone cases, mouse pads, vibrators. All, one of those is a lie. All with the day one patch kids character of your choice. They got them from Metal Gear, from Doom, from Half-Life, from my very own God of War, even Twisted Metal. Check them out. Rotten Tanuki's day one patch kids. Go on over there and give them a bid. <clears throat> give them a big wet licory kiss. Um, all right. Let's talk about Diablo for a second. This is This has me interested. This was the mobile phone game. This was the, this was the mobile phone game that everybody kind of lost their shit about uh, at BlizzCon a few years ago where they're like, fuck you, we don't want mobile games. We don't want free to play. We want a real fucking Diablo. And they're like, yeah, whatever, that's coming. Diablo 4 is coming. But this is Diablo Immortal, and they, uh, it's coming out in June, which, if you don't know, is a month, a little less than, a, a little more than a month away. Uh, June 2nd. Right. And uh, what's cool about it, though, is they said, you know what? Here's the deal. Most people, if we put it out on the phone, they're going to emulate it and play it on their PC anyway. So why don't we just make a, a PC version of it that's cross play with mobile? And that's what they've done. And if you're looking at your screen, it looks pretty good. I mean, it doesn't look as good as uh, it doesn't look as good as, you know, Diablo four, of course, but it you know, it looks fun. And, and they're saying, look, we, we wanted to make it so we're going to put it on a PC and we're going to make an official PC version that launches the same day that is cross play because we want it to have good controls, fluid controls. We don't want you playing some emulated bullshit um, on your PC that isn't sort of up to snuff with what you expect from Diablo. And since you're going to play it anyway, just fucking here, take the PC version, which I love. Because now I'm excited. It's free. I'm going to play it. If I love it and I fall in love with it, I'll be able to walk around and play it. Uh, hopefully we can do some game nights with it. I don't know how much microtransaction bullshit is going to be in there in terms of uh, play to win. We'll have to find out. The one thing I'll say about Diablo, and no one will be surprised who watches the stream regularly, is I've never finished a Diablo game. And one of the reasons I never finish them is it gets to a point where... It's just too much fucking shit on the screen. And I don't know how you guys do that. I mean, I grew up with Gauntlet. I understand crowding the screen with bad guys. But there's a point, I was playing with my son Diablo 3 on the PlayStation, which was a great version of it, PS3 or PS4 version of Diablo 3. And it got to a point one Saturday afternoon we were playing, and we were both like, okay, fuck this game. Like, you literally cannot make your goddamn character out because there's so many enemies on screen that you're like, fuck this utter uh, horse shit. Um, but regardless, I'm going to give it a try. It's free. It's on PC. Uh, like I said, this looks like a game night uh, game waiting to happen. Uh, maybe it'll be the next game I fall in love with. Maybe it'll be your next game you fall in love with. But regardless, they announced today, June 2nd, PC and mobile phone, Diablo Immortal. It's a coming.
settle in and uh, get ready for it. Okay. Um, tomorrow, by the way, by the by, huh? As the kids say, I love that when the when the youngsters say by the by. Um, tomorrow, by the by, um, it does have a uh, course says doesn't have uh, PVP. It does. There is a PVP mode, uh, but it might be a team based PVP mode um, where like the guy who wins becomes the immortal or something. I, they, they didn't really go into a lot of details, at least today. Maybe if you watch the old trailer back at, uh, at uh, BlizzCon, they explained it. But yes, there, there is some uh, not there's more than just co-op in there. So tomorrow on Game Pass, I don't know what's dropping other than this game. Seven Days to Die drops tomorrow. Now, this game's been out for a while on PC. They've sold 14 million copies of the thing. I'd never even really heard of it. I think maybe I thought it was just another one of those uh, Dead by Daylight games. This looks fucking cool. This is out tomorrow. It's on Game Pass. You goddamn right. This is a game night, uh, Gabin and Games game night game. It apparently is a mixture of Minecraft and uh, Left 4 Dead. And you're able to, it's all voxel environments. And you're, it doesn't look like they're voxel environments. But, you know, you're able to uh, explore the huge environment, craft and repair weapons, clothes, armors, tools, vehicles. There's over 500 things you can craft. Take over ruins or build from the ground up. You can cooperate or you can compete. You can raid each other's bases and take supplies to make your own base. Uh, you can uh, make your own world just for you and your friends. There's a lot to this fucking game. Again, I have never heard of this fucking thing, but when I went and I watched some videos of it, uh, I was like, that kind of looks really, really fucking fun. I am surprised, though, th these images here don't look voxel. But if you do go to YouTube and search it, YouTube uh, Seven Days to Die, <coughs> I'll check the chat, because maybe some of you guys have played this. Seven Days to Die gameplay. Uh, I've never really, I don't know what this is. But um, the gameplay doesn't look well, voxely. Like it looks that broke out here. like it's an attempt at reality. But regardless... There's a lot of building, a lot of crafting like Minecraft. It looks like fun. I'm going to give it a try. Let me check this. Connor Steinbeck has been a member for 16 goddamn months, sir. There's very little things in life I've done for that long, but the fact that you've been hanging in there for 16 months, I appreciate it, buddy. Here's what he says. He says, look, looky here, a milestone. Pretty sure it's actually 16 months. It does say 16 months, but whatever. Thanks for the great streams and memories for the past year, Jaffe. Connor, thank you, buddy. Yeah, it does say 16 months. What are you talking about? Why, why are you thinking it's anything other than that? That's weird. But yes, oh, it says new member there. Point is, thank you, Connor. You know I appreciate it, buddy. Um, so Tony Barnes says, that's my boy's game. Dude was an LD for me at the collective, an L level designer. I told him he should have named it Zombie Craft. He's been living off that game for a decade. Tony's, uh, uh, as you may know, he's designer, creator of many, many of your favorite games. Uh, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I've never played it. Um, Kyle Homer says it looked great when I saw it. Legend says it probably started out like Minecraft, got updated throughout the, the year. Um, yeah, so this is tomorrow. This is Game Pass. This is quote free. I know. I don't want to trigger you. I'll tell you another game that I'm very excited about. You may know this. I'm sure you do. PAX was this week uh, or last weekend. And one of the games that I'm really interested in that they showed there is uh, Shredder's Revenge Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Destructoid went there and they did God's work for us. They said, hey, you know what we'll do? We'll tell people how it plays. So while I'm showing you the footage on one screen, here you go. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this article in Destructoid because they actually got hands on. They like it a lot. Uh, the title from a, a, a writer called Eric Van Allen, he says, this is the retro brawler I hoped it would be. Now, first off, I didn't know until just now who was making this game. Tribute Games and Dotimu. I think that's how you pronounce it. Dotimu, Dotimu. Uh, Tribute has made Flint Hook and Panzer Paladin. Now, Panzer Paladin is awesome. It's just too hard for me, but it's kind of like Shovel Knight, right? It's, it's very fucking cool. And then Dotimu has collaborated on Streets Rage 4 and Windjammers 2. So these two, you know, kind of war horses of retro gaming are coming together and they're making uh, this title. Here's some of the things they say about it. The, the, the author says, this action feels right at home. 
for retro action game fans. Go right, beat up bad guys. There's a basic attack button and a special attack. Jumping and flipping, round out the face buttons. We can, you can also taunt to build up your attack meter and you can cheer each other up by high-fiving each other and you share health when you high-five each other, right? Um, they're saying it's simpler than Streets of Rage 4, but there's enough variety and there's enough... Uh, interesting scenarios that come up and power-ups and things that it doesn't matter that it's not as deep as Streets Rage 4. Uh, they really like it. They have like specialty pizzas that give you infinite specials. Um, they have really flashy kind of funny moves, they say. Um, April April O'Neil, um, they're saying, is really, really fun to play. She does things like visual gags, like mic drops, uh, attacking people with her boom mic, talking smack by filming them, putting them on a TV and then kind of making fun of them. Um, so it sounds like it's got a lot of personality. They say it plays like a cartoon. Um, it's also solid and really fucking fun. And so the guy walked away saying if, if the rest of the game plays like this, uh, we're in for a really, uh, a really good fucking time. Uh, it's online and local co-op, so I will absolutely be getting it, and I will absolutely be making it a game night game. This looks like a goddamn blast, and I'll tell you something else. I'm glad to see, I understand this genre is a niche, but I'm glad to see that, it, my point is usually, whether you're talking River City uh, Girls or whether you're talking Streets of Rage 4, at least I think Streets of Rage 4, I don't think that was online, but a lot of these come out and they're great, but you have to play couch co-op, which is wonderful. But, you know, everybody plays online these days. So I'm, I'm excited to learn that this is going to be four-player online or couch co-op, so a lot more people can enjoy it as it was designed to be enjoyed. So I'm very excited. This will be coming out. Um, I don't think they've given a release date. It's just sometimes uh, this year. Mutant Mo said Street Rage was online. Okay, I, I don't remember that. I did finish it. I played it all solo, but I but I loved it. But I never I never played online. Okay, great. Um, somebody needs to bring back Golden Axe. A Adversary One. You know they tried. Sega on one of their anniversaries put out um, Golden Axe prototype that some team had made and to kind of get to get the deal with Sega um, and, and, and uh, to say, hey, this is viable. And for whatever reason, they didn't move ahead with production. But um, I, gold, gold, if you go back and play Golden Axe, all I can tell you is there ain't much there. I mean, Golden Axe is like um, the foundation of a house, which is the foundation of a genre. But when you actually play it, based on what you've learned to play since, it's really not very good. It's really not very good. It's very boring. But Mr. Den is saying it's so good. So, you know, your mileage uh, your mileage may vary. I didn't care for it when I played it again. Um, all right. Here's a game which I totally forgot about, which cannot be good news for Ubisoft. Um, let's get that off the screen. Uh IGN reports that Writer's Republic Season 2, remember that fucking game? Writer's Republic Season 2 brings the new showdown arena with its own multiplayer mode, new toys, new mass races, new season progression, and more. Um, I played the demo. I enjoyed it. It was fine. Had no desire to buy it and own it and play it a lot. Um... Which, just because I don't love it, doesn't mean no one else loves it or everybody else loves it. But it is weird because I never hear anybody talking about this game. Um, I'm telling you, man, th this is the hardest nut out there to crack. And one of the reasons Sony probably has 10 of these fucking games in development is maybe that's the ratio of success. It's like, yeah, we have 10. We'll count ourselves lucky if two last for more than 18 months. And one is actually a financial hit that pays for the other eight or seven or nine, whatever. Um, because, yeah, I mean, I heard this was great. I think Rob and uh, Spazbo might have been playing this together or something like that. It was, I don't hear them talking about it anymore. And, uh, you know, what did they, they had their skyscraper battle royale that came and went. That's a hard nut. It's a hard nut to crack. It's very saturated. So, but anyway, if you're into this, Showdown Riders Republic Season 2 uh, is coming April 26th, which I think is tomorrow. Um, so there you go. Keep it in mind. Let's talk about this story. I'm finally saying, fuck it. Right when I get off the stream tonight. Come on now. 
right when I get off the stream tonight, uh, I am going to uh, go ahead and, and, and bite the bullet and buy one of these. Uh, let me show it to you real quick. Um, hang on. So basically Meta, which was Facebook, um, has opened up their very first retail store. And this matters to me because I do love virtual reality. Why is that still on the screen? Uh, uh, go away. There we go. This matters to me because I, I do still love virtual reality. Um, and one of the things with VR is, as everybody knows, is it really is only going to work if people have a chance to play it and experience it. And this is, um, it's not a very big store. There's only one. It's in Burlingame, which is up north, uh, kind of around Palo Alto, where all the tech companies are, including Facebook or Meta or whatever. But they're opening it up so people can come in and, and they can start to play around with VR for the first time if it's new. Um, they have this massive wall that the people playing VR are able to see what the person sees. So even if you're not in the headset, you understand it more. Apparently, they also have glasses that they have through Ray-Ban, which are called Ray-Ban Stories. Um, and I didn't know they were this far along, but they're augmented reality sunglasses that you can try on and then a little camera will open like I don't know if you can buy them yet because it says portal will be available in a special demo where you can call a retail associate using its smart camera but I don't know if you can do those through the Ray-Ban so uh, let me just see real quick Ray-Ban's uh, stories glasses what is this is this I, I must have missed this um, they're smart sunglasses with camera and audio um, so there's a little camera in them um, our smart eyeglasses with camera audio combine legendary, legendary meta Facebook technology and iconic Ray-Ban style with X Ray-Ban X meta glasses. You can take photos and videos, listen to music and calls and share content to your social media channels. Choose your Ray-Ban tech glasses from three timeless shapes. That's cool. I would do that. They're 300 bucks. I wouldn't do that, but you know, when the price comes down, that's kind of cool to have glasses that can do all that. It's only going to get more advanced as it uh, moves on. So you can play around with these at the, at the, at the store as well. Uh, so, you know, but the point, oh, the point is though, so I'm going to go after the stream tonight, I'm going to bite the bullet and buy an Oculus, uh, uh, quest two. I already have the one. And besides this story, it was also this last night. Um, we just did a test stream. It was like, you know, me and random moves, Spazbo, Kaiden, Rob was there. He couldn't get in, but we were spending some time in alt space. Cause I've been thinking about doing some of these streams from alt space. And I was thinking about doing, um, you know, a poker night or a game night or a virtual meetup. And you don't have to have VR for this. I was doing this on a flat screen as long as you have a PC. But I was just like, you know, man, it is cool. It is cool to have that experience. Like I don't, I haven't found myself falling in love with the actual games of VR. Although I do want to try out Resident Evil uh, 4 in VR. Spaz says it's great. Everyone says it's great. But it's the social stuff in VR that I just really am drawn to and really excited by. So uh, I will be uh, hopping into the VR Quest 2, uh, you know, as soon as possible, whenever it shows up, whenever it shows up. Uh, yeah, I mean, somebody in the chat, this is a truth teller saying this is similar to the metaverse. I mean, the metaverse is a stupid name because now you just feel like a dork saying it. But ultimately, though, yes, I mean, th this is what they're talking about. The fact that I could sit there and I've had this experience when I've played Poker Stars VR. I think that's what it's called on the Quest or the Oculus Rift, where I'm not a moron. I know I'm in a virtual environment, but after a while, your brain just buys it and you're having connections with these other avatars. And, you, you know, I've sat up some nights till three in the morning playing poker with total strangers who by the end of it, they're still strangers. I'm not trying to romanticize like they're one of my best friends now, but it's cool though, that it really does feel like playing poker with people. So I'm, I'm in, 
I'm in on the metaverse, even though I think it's stupid because games and shit is it's been around forever for a long time. And now it's got a fucking name attached to it. And it's like it's a new thing. It's not a new thing. It's been around forever. Anyway, whatever. There you go. So that's that. There, there's some VR news for you. Stick that in your butthole and smoke it. Am I right, boys? Yeah, I did it. I told him off. Listen to me. Um, just heads up. A little gift from your Papa Jaffa. You guys have to have seen this. You have to have seen this. This was out a couple of weeks ago. Um, this guy says, you know what? With Unreal 5 being as cool as it is, I want to create Superman. I want to make a Superman game, okay? Well, I'll put this on while we're chatting for a moment. It's not actually Superman, of course, for legal reasons. He's uh, not making any money off it. He's taken the level in the Matrix. Now, this is not the news. You've heard about this. He's taken the level in the Matrix uh, from the Unreal 5 engine, and he's used that, and he's put Superman in it, and you can go racing through this fucking city, okay? The news is today he puts this out for everybody to play. I will put the link up in the chat right now. Uh, you can get it over on itch.io if you have a PC. This is why I always say people say, Jaffe, console, PC. If you can only get one, all the sexy time is happening over on the goddamn cock duty PC. Everything you could want to play with uh, is, uh, is happening. And it's really fucking cool. But anyway, you can get it. Apparently, you got to have a pretty meaty rig um, to, uh, to uh, play it. But, you know... There you go. That's available starting today. It's free. He's not making any money off it. He just wants to share the fact that he thinks a Superman game would be cool. I think most people think a Superman game would be cool. I think the new owners of Warner Brothers and DC Comics feel the same goddamn way. And I think we will be getting one. I'll tell you what. Look at that goddamn thing. And all these people, how can you make a Superman game? Fuck off. You're, you have, if you're one of the people asking, how can you make a Superman game? It's impossible. He's too powerful. Let me just say, I feel bad for your lack of imagination. The idea that you think that is actually something that would prevent a Superman game. How can you write a Superman story? How can you do anything with Superman? It, you, you make up enemies that are able to counter some of his great shit and you move on with your fucking life. Anyway, the point is, there's Superman. That game, and if you think back, well, you can't. I don't know how old you are. If you're my age, this is it, right? This is what we get today. This was Superman on the 2600 um, that I think my dad brought it home for a birthday present one year. And I was happier than a pig in shit because this was what we had. Shut the fuck up. Don't ever tell me you struggle. <laughs> Look at that. That was our version of Superman. If Tony's still watching, he remembers that. Look at that. Now he's Clark Kent. Now he's going to be, you can go into the phone booth, which is basically a rectangle. That's the jail to put Lex Luthor in. Or the criminals in. I mean, it's the most ridiculous thing in the world. But that was what we had. And it was awesome. And we loved it. All right, let's move on. Um, okay. Any of you guys... I think this is good news. Speaking of PCs. I think this is good news. Um, uh, about Sony... I know a lot of people get upset about Sony's uh, motion into the PC realm, but the fact of the matter is it's happening and it's getting bigger and bigger. This I take as good news for someone like me. They're basically, I'm almost certain that they are basically trying to be parody with uh, uh, PS Now on the, the PC. They're hiring for a senior director of PC planning and strategy. This is from Benji Sales who's a sales analyst in the industry, but he found this on the LinkedIn or on greenhouse boards or whatever. Lead P this is what you got to do if you have the job. Your job is to lead PC growth and commercial strategy, grow PC monthly active users for PC content, develop and implement global PC store strategy and process. What's interesting about this, so I was playing uh, PS Now today on my PC. The problem with it on the PC is it's exactly like... Um, uh, on the console and that you can only stream stuff if it's like a PS or any game, you can't download any game. So I'm hoping where they're going with this, especially since they're bringing so much of their content to PC, I don't know if they're going to be bringing the older games to PC, but at least moving forward, everything they put out and maybe some of the legacy titles will be able to just be downloaded or streamed onto your PC. So, I mean, I, you know, this is the future embrace it. Don't whatever, but the train's leaving. You can jump on board or not. So this is a real job. Uh, it's Sony indicating to me and the other people who are looking at it that these guys are absolutely uh, doubling down on the PC market because they think that is a big part of their future strategy. 
And I, uh, you know, I think they're right. I think they're absolutely right. Um, I want to tell you something really quickly. Uh, I want to tell you about two quick things. And after those two quick things, we're going to start talking about what's sold. Because the sales figures for America are out for March, right? We usually do the sales figures every week for the UK, but America only puts them out once a month. Well, we got them, boys. We wrestled the muse of sales figures and we got them. But before I tell you what's selling and what's not, the biggest surprise to me about which Sony title has legs and which ones looks like it doesn't, I want to tell you about two quick things. First off, if you're looking at your screen, I want you to pay attention to these fellas here. Look down there. Look at those guys down there. Look how tiny they are. They may be tiny, but they got themselves a hell of a podcast. This is the latest podcast. I will be on it May 8th, which I think is a week from this coming Saturday. It's Mother's Day, I think, or Sunday. I don't know. It's soon. I'll be doing their Family Feud edition episode, okay? What they do is they do trivia and contests and all kinds of games about video games, right? I ripped this off from them. This is not their game, but they do games like this, and I made up my own. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you to see how wise and smart you are. I'm going to play a voice sample. This is the kind of shit they do over there. It's trivia. It's family feud. They also have these really cool audio puzzles. I'm going to play you a voice that I have manipulated. It is a mystery voice of an industry figure, as the British say, as normal people say, figure. Okay. It is a mystery voice of an industry figure. I want to see who in the chat will be the first one to tell me who this is. I won't give you much time. If you can't guess it, oh well. Here we go. Here we go. I say it's time to focus on what really matters. The games. Look at it this way. If you've got an awesome girlfriend, and then someone else gets an awesome girlfriend, you know who it is? Everyone. I say it's time to focus on what really matters. The games. Look at it this way. If you've got an awesome girlfriend, and then someone else gets an awesome girlfriend, you know who it is? Everyone. No, it is not Reggie. It is not Reggie. It is, it's not Max Ankar. Uh, it is not Peter Molyneux. It's not Phil Fish. Yes, Masakista gets it. It was Kevin Butler of, uh, of Sony fame. There you go, buddy. Uh, where, where is it? Kevin Butler. There you go. That's right, 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 right. So if you like games like this, and I love games like this, go on over to the latest podcast. It's down below uh, in the links below in the link tree, and you can see if you can put your own skills up against the folks over at the latest. The last thing I want to tell you real quick, which is super important, uh, it's really, you know, it's, people talk about conservation of video games. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Um, I understand games are, I'm not an idiot, <laughs> maybe a little one. I understand games have been, are, exist to be played. I get it. But you know what? Second, second to that is this world of long plays. They've been in business. Think about this, a YouTube channel going for 15 years, still going strong. Our very own Spasbo works over there playing commentary free games from every single goddamn cock a duty generation from beginning to end. Uh, expert gameplay. They'll show you what's what. They'll show you how to play. They'll let you just put it on in the background like I do and fade away to one yesteryear of uh, fantasies of being a kid and playing your favorite games. Uh, this is World of Long Plays. You can find the link. It's over on YouTube, but you can also find the link in our link tree below. This is from a good friend, Spazbo. Uh, he's recording games all the time. Uh, and like I said, you got stuff from PlayStation, from C64, from the arcade. It's just a cornucopia of video games. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. All right, there you go, fellas. Let's talk about the sales. Oh, that look at that. Space Invaders going by. Space Invaders is the first game I played on the Atari. Me and my brother got it. My dad brought it home for my birthday. We got Space Invaders. My sister bought us for my birthday uh, Flag Capture, which was awesome. Um, and then we got Superman. And we played the fuck out of those fucking games. Oh, you guys don't, you know, that's the thing. That's the fucking thing you have to understand. I, again, I'm not, I'm not bringing this up to blow sunshine on my buttocks. I'm telling you, you know, I get people all the time uh, telling me, Jaffe, your games, and again, our games, but, you know, fine. Your games, you know what they mean. The whole team's games made my childhood. I get it all the time. 
But what you guys may or may not understand is I have been there. I understand. I understand the power of video games and nostalgia. I remember like it was yesterday going into service merchandise with my brother and my father and a guy named Steven Marks, which was my brother's friend. And we saw the box for Atari 2600 Adventure. I also saw the box for the Odyssey's game called uh, Quest for the Rings, which was this massive fucking game with a video game meets a board game. But anyway, we saw the dragon on the box for Adventure, and it was so evocative and so exciting, and I just have such fond memories of, of that time and playing those games. All I'm saying is, when you guys tell me, oh, that game meant a lot to me, I get it. I get it. There's nothing special about me and the team. We were in the right place in the right time, and we worked our asses off. But I get it. Game hits you at the right time, changes your life, makes you happy. Let's talk about games that are selling well, because you guarantee know that at least one of these games is going to change somebody's life in the same goddamn way. This is what's selling right now. Uh, March spending is down. A lot of that's COVID. A lot of that is the fact that nobody can find what they want, which is a PS5. Obviously, it's easier to get the Xbox, which is why the Xbox this, uh, this month uh, outsold... Uh, in money, in dollars, the Switch and the PlayStation. More people spent, more or more money was spent on Xbox X and S in March than any other console out there. Switch still led in terms of units, but again, what we're really getting to, fellas, we've talked about this a couple times now this week. If you're Sony, you may not need to be scared of Game Pass, and you may not need to be scared of the quality of, of Xbox's first party. You may be like, yeah, we're okay. But you better fucking be scared of the fact that you're not showing up because gamers will only wait so long and then they'll say, you know what? Fuck it. This is good enough. Game Pass looks awesome. All the shit's coming down. Fuck it here. And I can get it now. When are you going to get... Look, I get it. You can't magically create something that stops the chip shortage or whatever's causing it, which I think is the chip shortage. But Microsoft figured it out, and Sony, you better fucking figure it out, because there's going to come a point where a lot of these people are only going to get one of these boxes, and they would have chosen yours, but they can't. And they're like, yes, Jaffe, we know, we're trying. I know you know. I know you're trying. I'm just saying you better hurry. Because, you know, before you know it, you're going to get to a tipping point, and it's, it's going to be hard to catch up. So come on, Sony, make your fucking shit. Figure it out. Figure it out. Earn your fucking huge salary, uh, Jim Ryan. Come on now. Listen, I want to talk to software. Elden Ring, March, best-selling game of March, best-selling game of the year so far. Uh, if you look at the previous year, this is coming from Game Industry Biz, um, it is only beaten by Call of Duty in terms of dollar sales, right? And that's not even this year. So the year of 2022, Elden Ring is the best-selling game of the year. Uh, Call of Duty in the last 12 months sold more in terms of dollar sales. Gran Turismo 2 comes in really high in America at number two. Um, it is, I believe what they said about Grand Theft Auto is they said it is the best selling uh, launch ever in the United States. The fourth best, it's already the fourth best selling game of 2022. And it is the biggest launch for the month, uh, uh, it, it, for the launch month in the United States. Okay, so it's doing great. Uh, let's go through uh, the top mobile games if you're into such nonsense. Candy Crush Saga is the biggest mobile game in March in terms of money, followed by Roblox, followed by Coin Master. Listen to this. I'm going to give you... I'm gonna, th this is March now. We're past this, but this is the... Let me, let me tell you some of the ones that are exciting. Um, well, what's... You know, some of these are sales and stuff. Valhalla is still in the top 20. How the fuck that's happening, I don't know. Fine. Uh... Triangle Strategy for a weird fucking game with a weird fucking uh, name uh, that has apparently a very slow opening. Coming in at number 16 is not too bad, and this doesn't include digital either, so keep that in mind, okay? Ghostwire Tokyo looks dead on arrival. Exclusive console game. Had its own state of play. It was very on people's minds that follow video games. It could not muster more than number 12 in America. Obviously did better because it's got digital, but come on now. Come on now. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands comes in at 11. That's a little soft. Uh, Stranger Paradise is a little soft, or as the president of Square would tell you, it's below expectations. That comes in at number 10. WW2K22, which I have a big surprise for you guys. I'll tell you about it at the end of the show, uh, is, uh, is uh, number 7. Here's where it gets a little interesting. So Kirby comes in at three. MLB The Show comes in at four. Gran Turismo's two. Elden Ring's number one. 
Horizon Forbidden West was two last month. It's five this month. That's not bad. That's pretty good legs for Horizon, especially given the fact that um, it was competing against Elden Ring and it's really fucking hard to find the PS5. Now, I don't know how many sales are on. I, I think I think a couple of weeks ago we got the figures that were PS5 was like, it was like a like a 58 uh, split. It was like, like a 60-40 split. So 40 people going with the uh, PS4 and 60 going with the PS5. But still, that's pretty good. Okay. Uh, anything else in the top 20? No. Um, the top selling games of the year, I'll just give you the top 10 so far. This is the last 12 months. FIFA is number 10. Dying Light, number 9. Number 8, Mario Kart 8. Number 7, Kirby already in the top 10 of best-selling games of the year. Number six is Madden. Number five is Call of Duty Vanguard. Number four is Gran Turismo 7. Number three is Horizon Forbidden West. Look at that. Sony's got two of them in the top four. Pokemon is number two. Number one, the best-selling game in the last 12 months is Elden Ring. Now, here's where it gets a little interesting regarding canaries and coal mines. So this is the chart that comes out every week in the UK. This is retail. We'll get the UK's digital in a couple of days. But... It's interesting for the absence of a Sony game, right? So here's what's kind of cool. I'll, I, 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 I'm not going to read. Lego's number one, FIFA's number two, blah, blah, blah. Here's where it's interesting. Elden Ring um, has bumped up a little bit more. It, it, it was at eight. It's at six. It's been out for well over maybe two months now. Horizon is still there. It dropped from three to seven, but it's still in the top ten. Gran Turismo's gone on so this is this is late april in the uk we're looking at march for america it's looking like horizon may very well have better legs than gran turismo i don't know if that's true but if you're able to look at the uk and say their sales tend to match american sales and that's often true with the exception of a couple things like fifa and whatnot that's interesting if if the, the, i mean i that's very interesting to me I wonder what that says. Let's assume that's the case. Let's assume for the moment that uh, Gran Turismo doesn't have the legs. Is it because of the controversy? Is it because of the way it's tuned? Is it because of the fact that it's too simmy uh, and it's too elitist for the room? Whereas something, and again, I don't know how Forza did. I mean, it did great for, a, you know, where you're judging users and monthly active users. And then it went down. It comes back when there's an event. But I, I wonder if that's at play where a game, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if people have been conditioned to go, I don't want it that semi. Or I, I have no idea. Maybe it's just bad. Uh, let me go to the chat, see what you guys are saying. I'd be curious what your philosophy or what your theory is because... It's weird. I, I didn't expect to see it drop out that quickly. Um, uh, Cattlemon says it's because Horizon Forbidden West is a complete game. Um, you're suggesting that Gran Turismo dropped because it's not, and people were walking away from it because it's like, look, there's not enough content here. Now, I don't know if that's true because I've never played it. Uh, Gran Turismo says Young Wolf is for the hardcore racing gamers. Sure, but Gran Turismo has always been a huge hit. We see in a but maybe it's front loaded because remember it was the it was the best selling launch Gran Turismo in America for its launch month. Um, I don't know if the same can be said of the UK, but maybe their fans showed up and then that was it. That was it. Um, uh, Grape King says. Uh, I mean, Kyle says there was zero marketing. I don't know if that's true. Um, uh, Gran Turismo is kind of the same, says Truth Teller, and it was involved in controversy. Um, Legend says, I feel like a lot of PS gamers are trying to wait to buy these new games for PS5 once they get one. I mean, that that's also a good point. However, though, last week in the UK, we did see a jump in all of these fucking games, including Ghostwire Tokyo, which is a bonafide flop, I would imagine, still ticked up when there was more hardware available. It's just weird that... Um, you're not seeing that reflected with Gran Turismo, but you are seeing it reflected with uh, Horizon. But, you know, probably you're right, though, in the sense that when the fives come to a lot of people at retail, you'll probably end up in a position then where it's kind of like, OK, well, there's so much content now for Gran Turismo because it's been going for eight months or whenever they solve their uh, stock shortage. So we'll see it. 
G says Gran Turismo has been in sharp decline since GT5. Okay. Young Wolf wants you to know Horizon's gameplay is some of the best ever. Like I said, I have issues with Horizon. I am going to go back and play it some more. But I won't, I, you know, I, I don't have a dog in the fight. I will tell you that I thought the motion of the character, the control of the character, the combat is awesome in that game. Fucking awesome in that game. There's a lot I don't like about the game so far, but that is not one of them. One of the things we were talking about last night, um, I think this was, no, this was on a, I was on a podcast, The Sauce, this weekend. And um, one of the things that came up was the lack of games for Xbox. And when are they going to, you know, all the, nothing new. I'm not going to retread that, but, you know, the, the gist. Good Lord, they have all these companies. They have this great service if you like Game Pass. But why can't they release games? Why is Halo so shit? All this stuff in terms of frequency of drops. But we were talking about one of the things Microsoft does pretty well and could do more of is their marketing. It's almost like their marketing and all their other teams, their marketing, solving the hardware channel problems, all the stuff that they've been good at is firing on all cylinders. It's their game management. Clearly, that is uh, a problem. And I only bring it up because I'm looking at this ad that kind of came across my screen today. And it's like, you know, the ads they could run this Christmas, the, you know, the ads they could run if the Activision deal goes through. It's like, hey, we talked about this. It's just like, here, here's what it, the, what was the, what was the, uh, there was a great classic Atari ad from back in the day where it was like, I, I think it was like it had this guy um, coming up to the shelf and he says, I want to, coming up to the store clerk, he says, I want to buy an Atari. And I want all the games. And the clerk says, all the games? And he says, yeah, give me all the games. And by the end of the commercial, he's just flooded with video games. Like, he's like, oh, in other words, like, we have so much fucking shit to play, your mind will explode, right? Um, you could do something similar if you're Xbox, especially when you get Call of Duty and stuff like that. And you could go, here's what it'll cost you to play these big hit games of the summer on PlayStation. And then it's just like, you know, Call of Duty and whatever, Starfield and, the, uh, you know, whatever, whatever they're putting out that is going to be multi-platform that's big. And it ends up tallying up to like, you know, $430. $430, says the mom in the commercial. That's almost as much, that's more than the actual console itself. Here's what it'll cost you to play those same games on Xbox. Zero. Now, obviously, it's not zero, but you can market it like that because then there's little, you know, if you have Game Pass, it's zero, right? Everything at Xbox is firing on all cylinders except their ability to make the fucking games in a timely manner for their fucking box. And when I see something like this, I'm just like, oh my God, you guys, you're so close. I mean, I don't care who wins. I don't give a fuck. I own everything. I'm just saying it's like it's so tough to see them that close to the fucking... Um, Goal line. Is that what it's called? The goal line? I like football. I watch a lot of college football. I don't know what the guy... I know it's the end zone. What's the line called that the guy has to get his helmet on? Or the ball? What is this? Is it just the goal line? It doesn't matter. It's the white powdery line that looks like cocaine. They're that close. Just figure out your management, you motherfuckers. Anyway, let's move on. We're going to talk a little bit about that. But we can't really talk about Halo without going through uh, what I like to call, it has not the line of scrimmage, Magic Circle, no. Um, so you can't really talk about the state of Halo, though, without going through Gran Turismo, okay? And this is why. Gran Turismo comes out today and they say, hey, fellas, for whatever you think about Gran Turismo, if it has legs, if it doesn't have legs, if the controversy caused a lack of sales, but it'll bounce back, who the fuck knows? But what you can't do is deny that they can put out content lickety goddamn split. Forget the tuning and changes and listening to the audience and, and, and making things better for the audience when they express themselves. Today, after it's only been out for a month, they drop three brand new cars. They drop a new track, although it's a new track layout, which is just an addition. It's a new mode on a track, which causes some layout changes. And then something called scapes, which I don't know what that is. Here's the description. These are the Gosho style houses in Anokura and, and, and Cherry Blossoms at night. No idea what that is. It's probably a garage where you park your cars. And then it's labeled 
Gran Turismo 7 April update. And this website, Games Radar, is saying it suggests that might be gearing up to release the same sort of bite-sized content updates on a monthly basis. The point is, this is what is expected from a service game. Halo, on the other hand, apparently caused a bit of controversy, controversy over the weekend. Um, we already knew what season two was, but then over the weekend, they uh, 343 dropped their roadmap. Okay, now I thought I understood this and the article's telling me I understand it. Somebody on the chat this weekend told me I didn't understand it, but let me let me tell you how I understand it. I'll keep an eye on the chat. You tell me if this is wrong, but it seems to be backed up by um it seems to be backed up by um this article from Kotaku. That's not why I'm bringing up the article from Kotaku. I find the article from Kotaku about Halo really obnoxious but we'll talk about that in just a second but they dropped the roadmap over on friday and they're basically saying all of that stuff you knew about that we had already pitched you in season two uh which is two new maps a paltry two new maps uh a couple of modes now to be fair a couple of the modes sound pretty good um And some tweaks and tuning and all that. That's it. That's all you're going to get for season two. I'm sure there'll be some cosmetics and shit like that. All of that. You're not getting that May 3rd when it drops. That's my understanding. That is being parceled out over six months. And over the weekend, someone said, no, 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 no. You're going to get more levels in season two. They're just starting with two. But that's the only person I've heard say that, right? So if you you look at the article, it says... um, it says, uh, let me let me just, re- I had all this highlighted and it went away. I got to find a new highlight program. Um, uh, the article kind of confirms that. I, I don't know where it is anymore, but somewhere in the article, it's like, no, that's, that's the, that's the, that's the, the season, right? So if what you're, if, if that's true, um, here it is right here. It says, um. I just want to find this because it's important. I want to make sure I'm clear on this because that, that's a, that's a sticking point. That's a sticking point. Um, uh, okay, hang on. I, I apologize for the dead air, but I, I want you to hear this. So uh, give me a moment. But even if you look at, yeah, I mean, even if you look at this on the screen, it's season two Lone Wolves, May 03 to November. New maps, and there's two listed. New modes, there's three listed. Then there's like a, you know, the late August, you'll get campaign co-op network, not the split screen. That's going to be later. Forge is now going to be September. Um, New 100 tier battle pass, like armor and credits and shit like that, right? This is not one week or one month. This is six months. Okay, so after six months, you will have been blessed with two new maps. Uh, Sorry, sorry. After a year, you will have been blessed with two new maps. Okay? I'm not bringing that up to be like, let's say the same thing we always say. I bring it up because this article from Kentaku can go fuck itself. There's this guy, Ari Notice, who writes this. And he's really defending this line that came out from... Um, the uh, creative director of Halo, a fellow who likes to call himself Joseph Staten. He's the creative lead over at 343. Here's what he says. Um, They dropped the roadmap on Friday, and in a blog post, he says, this is why um, core features have been pushed back, we're missing windows, there's some TBDs, there's not as much content as you might like. Here's what he says. A priority zero of team health and getting ourselves into a sustainable development rhythm so that we can deliver great experiences to all of you while maintaining a healthy work-life balance. We know we need to deliver more content and more features more quickly. Staying true to priority zero, which is what I just read you, healthy work-life balance, means that sometimes we need to slow down in order to stay healthy and move faster later. But we're also aggressively looking at ways to accelerate, okay? Um, okay, sure. That's not my problem. As a customer, that's not my problem. It's not meant to be my problem, okay? Kotaku wants to make it my problem. 
Kotaku is very defensive of this. There, the, let me read you some of the, 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 the verbiage. Um, he says, uh, I think it's a he. He says, well, you know, this game was made during a pandemic. Um, he says, uh, others more seriously went so far. He's talking about fans online on Reddit. Others more seriously went so far as to raise the question of whether or not Microsoft should hand the franchise over to other developers other than 343. Like, that's going far at this point. The state of Halo, if you haven't questioned and you work at Microsoft, should we give this to id or should we get hell should we give this to an exile at this who the fuck knows but you're a moron if you haven't actually sat down and had that thought okay um then kotaku goes on and says um uh he says to a certain degree i get it halo fans are angry i've personally been at the edge of my seat for split screen co-op since launch Six months was a tad long for the first season, so while I'm eager for what's coming, I'm not sure it's enough to keep the player base healthy. But if 343 Industries is serious about putting its team first, if that rationale isn't just lip service to gloss over some behind-the-scenes crunch, then it's absolutely worth the wait, not a question in my mind. And I'm like, you work for the consumer. You work. I don't care who he works for. You work for Kotaku. You have a right to your stupid op opinion. But... When you are saying online co-op is pushed out, split screen co-op is TBD, campaign mission replays, Forge is pushed out now to September beta, and the first season doesn't start, the first season two starts and ends in six months, you can't defend it. This is a company that cannot compete in the, in the, in the space. What Kotaku should be saying is, we understand, the, this, this is what the article should be. The article should be, we understand that these games are made by real people, that crunch is really awful at times, and it sucks, and we need to do what we can as an industry, not that they're in the same industry, but as a games industry, they need to do what they can to make it better. But we also understand that it's a business and customers don't really give a fuck. And ultimately there's, these guys are competing with a lot of other companies that also don't give a fuck. Clearly Gran Turismo, whether they give a fuck or not, they figure out a way to get content out faster in this game. Um, certainly Fortnite does it. Certainly destiny does it. Um, the fact that this article doesn't speak to that is dumb. It's just fucking stupid. Because that's not the industry they're competing in. It would be, yes, it would be nice if we could all just for, sort of, you know, ship when it's ready. But let's make sure we all go home on time. I agree, it sucks to crunch. But that's the business you're fucking in. You shouldn't make excuses for it. That's all I'm fucking saying. That's all I'm fucking saying. Um, Legend says, don't give it to id. Uh, it would make it like doom. Um... Yeah, but at least we get content. I agree. Look, don't get me wrong. I love this game. I love Halo Infinite. I loved the campaign after it got rolling, after the in, the first two hours. Um, I adore the multiplayer. I'm excited for the Season 2 content. But it's shit. Their ability to make a service-based game is shit. And it needs to be put down. Not the game, but the way they're making the game. Victor says, give it to certain affinity. I know they've been helping a lot, and they are going to be helping more, they said. But Jesus Christ, man, how long is this shit going to take? What the fuck is going on over there? That's what Schreier, like I've said, that's what they need to be doing. That's what he needs to be reporting on. So IGN, I guess, I didn't know this. I haven't done this yet. So IGN puts up a, uh, I guess it's a, I guess it's a weekly trivia thing about the news. And I like trivia as much as the next fella. Tell me if you can uh, if 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 you can uh, beat me at this. Which movies did Nicolas Cage re recently reveal that he turned down? Lord of the Rings, The Matrix, King Kong, and Super Mario, Hobbit and Tomb Raider, Avatar and Constantine. I'm gonna guess Avatar and Constantine. I don't know if that's true. Uh, what's the answer? All right, I guess it'll tell me at the end. Roughly, how many copies did Lego Star Wars sell in its first two weeks? Two point eight. No. 3.2 million. I don't really know. I think it's 3.2. 
Uh, okay, let's see. What type of content is Netflix reducing? Animation. Uh, the upcoming Spider-Verse Madam Web 2023 release date. In which comic did she make her first appearance? Oh, fuck you. Fuck you. Oh, God, it was a spectacular, I think. I think it was a spectacular. I think. I think. Eh, it wasn't Web of Spider-Man. Splatoon's 3 release date. Isn't a game mode featured in the previous? Uh, oh, I see. Uh, I don't fucking know. Rainmaker. Maybe? 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 Uh, Amy Hennig just announced she's working on what? Star Wars game. Boom. Come on now. Video game writer Eric Walpole is eager to get working on which game franchise? Uh, that would be Portal 3, my friend. Uh, did you get 100%? Click on the spoiler button below to find out. I got that wrong. Nicolas Cage wanted to work on Lord of the Rings. I got that right. 3.2 million. Animation correct. Amazing Spider-Man got that wrong. Squidzilla got that wrong. Star Wars right. Portal right. So I'm okay. I'm okay. Not great. Listen to this. Sharif. Sheriff. It's Jaffe. How you doing? Hey, Jaffe. How's it going? It's good. How are you? Good, good. I just want to know, do you think uh, Microsoft will buy Ubisoft? Because everybody's talking about it. No, I don't. Because I, I don't think that would be the kind of company they would not want to have. But my understanding is they are already under the microscope with the Microsoft acquisition and to suddenly show up and uh, go, Hey, we're also spending, you know, 25 billion on this company. I have a feeling that would probably run the risk of harming the chances of them getting uh, the uh, government to say yes on their Microsoft, on their uh, Activision acquisition. So PlayStations are going to acquire it. What's that? Well, I mean, if Microsoft are not going to buy it, then who's going to buy them? Oh, well, right now, the the people who are actually, it's really strange. The people that are looking to buy Ubisoft at the moment are uh, uh, like, uh, uh, like, like fund managers, like private equity firms and stuff. They're not game companies. And do you know what the reason that they're saying they're interested in Ubisoft is? It's not their no, um, franchises. It's not. It's none of that. It's their NFT shit. It's their. Oh. F- and I'm like, what is going on in this wacky fucking stupid world that NFT shit is still capable of raising that kind of money when no one can explain it and everyone hates it. I don't understand it, but that's the word on the street. They're interested because of the NFT shit they're trying to do. I don't get it, and I don't like it, but there you go. Thank you, buddy. I'll talk to you soon, Sharif. i got to head out. Thank you. Thank you, All sir. right, man. You got it, buddy. Deli, real quick, last call of the night. What's up, pal? Uh, sorry, this is my first time on the show. I'm going to make it quick. If you could make one, if you could remake one game or have a remake of one game, what would it be? Of my own or just a game that exists in just the world? Just a game in general. Mm. If I could remake any game like not just a remake but it's like my own take on it right um Mm -hmm. i i think what would be fun to work on who that's a hard question because i really it's got to be special because i don't really want to make games that much anymore and so it would have to be something that that is exciting and would want to bring me back to the industry Mm -hmm. um I would say, oh my god, man! Uh, if you ha- if you have to go, you could always circle back. To, to circle back. To I'll circle back because I just don't know, man. I just I really don't fucking know. Um, you know, what I'm trying to think, like what I would want to work on would be something like. Um, like if we played a game the other day called Bloodshore, which was a full motion video game, uh, okay. I, w- I I think that would be a blast to work on a game like that, like a really you know low budget, kind of cheesy. Not that their thing was cheesy, but I, mine would be cheesy because I'm terrible at making movies. Um, I, I think a, a full motion video game built for streaming, I think would be really really fucking fun. Um, 
All right. Thanks, man, for the call. I appreciate it, buddy. Okay. Awesome. Thank Talk you. to you soon. Yeah, you got it. All right, fellas, I do got to run. I will chat with you soon. Be well, be safe, all that good stuff. Bye.